Are your projects and services running without any issues? Discover Uptime Kuma. Whether you are a developer managing projects for your customers or a company with multiple services running, it's the ideal solution to be notified when something happens and react accordingly. Before diving into the platform overview, let's see how to install it. It's completely free, you can install it directly on your server by following their documentation installation guide, or use a cloud provider of your choice to take care of everything for you, installation, backups and updates. Let me show you how you can create your uptime Kuma instance with our platform LSTO. Go to ls.io, hit login, deploy my first service, search for uptime and select Uptime Kuma. Choose your cloud provider, your region, your service plan to adjust the number of CPU, RAM or storage you need. Hit Next. Choose between the different level of support. The first one is included. Edit the name of your instance if you need to and hit Create Service. Once your instance is ready, you will receive an email and you can see it in the list of your services on LSTO dashboard. Click on it to access it. Then on your instance dashboard, click on Display Admin UI to get your credentials. Copy the password to your clipboard and click the link to access the admin UI. The username should be your LSTO account email address or the other admin that you set up at the installation process. Paste the password from your clipboard and hit login. And we land on the dashboard of Uptime Kuma. Currently, we don't have anything monitored, so it's a bit empty, we will fix it. But because I know a lot of people in the tech world are really in love with dark mode, let's start by doing it because Uptime Kuma is way better in dark mode. Go to settings, appearance, tem, force it to be dark. And let's zoom a little bit. Now we can start monitoring website services with Uptime Kuma. Let's go to add new monitor. First, let's add a website. So monitor type will be HTTPS. But you can see you have a long list of things you can monitor, such as databases, DNS, just ping a server or a Docker container. Let's keep HTTPS. The friendly name, we will name it course because I will put my course address. The URL is lessons.wawasensei.dev. You can define the heartbeat, which is how often it will trigger a check on that website to see if it's responding correctly with the HTTP status code of 200 or if you have any error. Let's keep the default one, which is one by minute. So it won't DDoS you to have one more request per minute, but on specific requirements, you might need to do it more often or less. Let's keep it simple and hit save. Now you can see added successfully. It tried at the very beginning and had a status 200, which means it works. And it's adding the first bar here to tell us our monitoring is set up okay, our project is running, we don't have any issue. Now let's add something else inside the monitor section. Instead of HTTPS, we'll add a DNS. So it's pretty useful if you set up a DNS and you want to know when it's working or if it has any issue over time. You can add it to your list. I will name it test DNS. The host name will be test dot wawa sensei dot dev. You can use a specific server to check the DNS, but by default, it's in the cloud for one and it's good for us. Resource record type, we say it's a C name, but it doesn't exist. So it's not an issue if it's not the correct one. And let's save it. So what you can see is because we just started it and it didn't work automatically, it is currently in a pending state. We will have to wait one minute to decide if it's in error state, so it doesn't work, or if it is in a right status, which means it works. But before, let's go back to our course. And we have a nice graph that is displayed. So for each minute, it made a request. And we have the response time. So the first time, we had 400 milliseconds, and it decreased over time. I guess it's because we had cache. So it didn't have to do the same whole process. And we just had our error triggered because it didn't successfully get the C name. So let's go back to test DNS. And now it was pending and the minute after it detected it is an error because it's unable to get access to this DNS. Of course, it's because it doesn't exist. This is a very nice dashboard, but you don't want to check every time and have a dedicated screen or TV at home to display it. Instead, what you can do is set up notification on many providers. Let's add our first one. Let's go to edit, 
Here, you can see by default, you have my SMTP alert, so you can add email notification very easily. But let's go to setup notification and create a new type of notification for our uptime Kuma instance. The type we will choose, we have a large list of providers we can use. We will choose Slack. So when we have an issue, it will send us a message in a Slack channel. Friendly name, okay, we can name it my Slack alert. The webhook URL. We will have to follow the documentation of Slack messaging webhooks. It's very straightforward. You have to follow the steps one by one by creating a Slack app, enable incoming webhooks, and creating an incoming webhook. I follow the step-by-step -step guide to create my app. Then you have to add features and functionality, add incoming webhooks, and you will have a URL you can use to provide to Uptime Kuma so it will be able to notify you. In the meantime, you can see that on the top bar, we have a notification badge here to show us we have an issue. So it's the DNS one. A webhook URL, it's this one. We can decide the username it will use. Let's say uptime kuma alert. You can choose an icon emoji and into which channel it will send the message. I created a channel in my Slack account named demo uptime kuma. Then you can decide if you notify the channel so it will send a notification to everyone or if you want just to create normal messages. Maybe it's better to keep it to the default. You can set up globally to be enabled every time you will add a new monitor. If you don't check it, you will have to select it for every individual monitor you create. And you can decide to apply to all the existing monitors as well. Let's do it. Save. And now we have my Slack alert set on the DNS. If we go to the course, we also have my Slack alert because we said apply to all. As I saved, I had a pending, then I have a new error. Now, if we go to Slack, we see exactly the error we have when we have it. It's pretty handy to not have to open uptime Kuma to know when something bad happens. The first step is really to add all the projects and services you want to monitor to have an eye on it. Then you can go to the dashboard page and have a main global overview about what is happening. So you have all the different events, what is up, down in maintenance, unknown or post. This is the dashboard for your team, but you can create public status pages to display it to your users or even your customers based on what kind of projects you need to display status for. Let's go to status pages and create a new one, new status page. You must be familiar with it with some websites providing status to know when there are down times, what is happening. Let's name it course status. We can choose the select, so it's at the end of the URL. Let's name it course. Hit next. We arrive on the status page editor. We can adjust the logo. Save it. Add the different service you want to monitor. So either you add them one by one, like here, but you could also add them to a group, but we didn't create any group. So for now, let's just add one service. We won't put all of them. You can adjust the title. The description, monitoring 7-7-24-24, the course website. You can add a footer text. You can use markdown syntax, even if I just wrote a raw text. You can choose the theme. By default, it's auto, so I'm in light mode, so it's displaying light mode. Let's switch to dark. You can show powered by uptime Kuma or not, but I like to promote open source software, so let's display it. You can add a domain name, so it won't use your instance URL directly, but instead you can host it everywhere by creating a CNAME. You can add analytics and customize the CSS of your page. Let's hit save. And then you have that page. You share the link to your users, so they know automatically if your service is available or if there are any maintenance or errors. It's a good way to be transparent and show how good your project is or if it's not, they know what is happening and they don't have all to contact you because you already know something is happened because you had notifications. Let's go back to the dashboard. If we go to our course, uh, let's go to the course, go back to dashboard course. Oh, so we are not in status page, but on the Uptime Kuma dashboard. On the top right, we can create a maintenance. So what it is, is we will warn our users something is happening. So it will be displayed inside our status page. Uh, new lessons added one hour 
downtime. We plan to add new lessons. The site will be off from X to Y. So which projects are affected by this? We choose the course. You can add it to all the status page or only for the course status. You can say if it's something happening every day, every day of week, every day of month, or just once. So for our use case, it's once. Time zone, I will use the same as the server time zone. We are the 30, so let's use large date. So I'm sure we are within it and hit save. Now we can see we have under maintenance because we are within that time frame here. And if we go to our status page, we are displaying to our users what is currently happening. So they are not worried about because the website, the application isn't working, but they have access to this page. It's explaining what is happening. So they will just wait at the end of the maintenance. And once everything goes back to normal, they will be happy to be back on using your service. And it also appears for you within Uptime Kuma. You can see currently it's under maintenance. So it's not an error. It's something you expect, even if currently, if they try the service, it's working correctly because we told it it's in maintenance phase. You will see it as maintenance here. We didn't go very deep inside the different possibilities for monitoring. But of course, if you have special configuration requiring proxies for security, you can set up everything within your instance settings. If you have any trouble with it, I recommend you to look at the documentation in the advanced section. You might find your answer here. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue discovering great free tools with us, watch this video here.